What's up? This is Creator. I'm right in the middle of my digital caliper roundup, and I figured I'd do a quick video on the proper use and testing and measurement procedures with a digital caliper. Uh, you can go on Amazon, you can go on the internet and read reviews for pretty much all of these uh, digital calipers and get mixed reviews on all of them. And, uh, you know, if you start reading through them, you can actually, you can actually tell that a lot of people uh, might be confused or might have, uh, uh, they might not be sure what they're doing when they're using a digital caliper. So this video is going to show you uh, what to do and what not to do when using a digital caliper. To see the full video review on uh, which of these perform the best and which is the best value for the dollar, uh, be sure to check out my other video on the Gadget Class channel on YouTube. The first thing you want to do when you're uh, using a digital caliper, um, you want to make sure uh, that you have nice, clean measuring faces. Uh, this is especially true if you get a brand new digital caliper. You want to make sure there's no uh, lubricating oils or uh, nothing on the measuring faces. Just take a, a plain sheet of paper and some isopropyl alcohol. You don't want to use any harsh solvents like, like uh, acetone on this. Uh, that can damage the plastic body and the labels on the caliper. Alcohol is perfectly fine. You're gonna uh, impregnate both sides of the paper. Take your uh, digital caliper and you're just gonna clamp down on the wet surface there and slide it off. Clamp down, slide it off. You know, this uh, three or four times and I would recommend doing this every time you use your digital caliper. Especially if you need accuracy, you know, down to the thousandth or half a thousandth. Uh, once you've done that a few times on the wet area, go ahead and come to a dry area and do it a couple more times. That'll get any remaining alcohol off and go ahead and give it a final cleaning action there. Same thing for the internal measuring surfaces, except these you're just going to slide it along, kind of like sharpening a knife. Just going to slide it along. like so. Come over to the dry paper. And there we go. Now we have a nice clean set of measuring surfaces for our digital caliper. That brings us to the next most important aspect of measuring with a digital caliper and that is your zero point. If you have uh, a Mitutoyo or an eye gauging Accu remote. Uh, those two have an absolute origin, which is a really, pretty much a, a really good feature to have. That's what separates the a really good digital caliper from the cheaper digital calipers. That's not to say you can't get a perfectly good reading with the cheaper digital caliper. Um, it just gives you one added layer of uh, precision and accuracy. Um, it gives it that much more of a robust nature. Um, basically what I'm talking about here, this is the uh, eye gauging Accu remote. Um, when you set origin, that absolute origin point, no matter where you are, it always knows where it is in reference to origin versus one of these that just remembers where it is since the last time you set zero. Um, so one of the cool things you can do with an absolute origin one is you can come out here, say you're uh, go no going apart, that is uh, you know nine five seven zero. You hit the increment button, and now you know everything in relationship to that point. So whether you're less or more, less or more, then you can always reset back to origin zero. So now I know exactly where I am. Come back to zero, and it's always going to come back to zero. That's what you get with a better digital caliper. With the with one of the cheaper ones, you just need to make sure that when you're at zero, you're actually at zero. So you're gonna clean your faces, come to zero, and make sure it always reads zero. The thing about um, the cheaper ones is they have a limited speed of measurement. So as long as you're using the thumb wheel, you're okay. But if you start moving it, really fast, it really can't keep up with that and you can lose zero really easy. Some are better than others. 
but uh, eventually you're going to get into a situation where you lose zero. So now, you know, we're at, you know, a thousandth off right there, or five off. So that's where the absolute origin ones kind of shine. Uh, they're never going to lose their reference point in relationship to zero. Um, but, you know, all you do on a cheaper one is just reset it. Sometimes the cheaper ones um, have an issue maintaining zero. Uh, like you'll get to zero and it'll, it'll start going five, one, five, one, zero, negative. And that's due to what I like to call a slop. And that's because the there's a little bit of play here between you know the ruler body and the digital body there. You see how it's it's going off by you know a half a thousandth there as I'm moving that around. Same is true at zero. As you move it, there's enough slop in there that you're going to get a variance in your measurement. And uh that slop will come into play as you're measuring things. So if you got a cheaper multimeter, you need to be aware of that slop and you need to be able to know and understand how your caliper performs in relationship to that play in the body. As long as you know that, you can get a, an accurate reading on pretty much anything with a cheaper multimeter or a cheaper digital caliper. Uh, to give you an example, let's pull out uh, a 10,000th feeler gauge here. You always want to make sure uh, those anything you're measuring should be clean as well. You can do the same thing. I've cleaned this today already. Um, so let's, uh, let's give you an example of what slop does and how to compensate for it. So I'm going to you know, put the feeler gauge in and we're at 0 0.095, so it's showing um, half a thousandth less than point uh, than one thousandth the feeler gauge is. But as we come out, we're going to slowly go towards the end of the jaws. And as we get towards the end of the jaws, you can see that it's measuring less. And that is because out here, you've got more torque applied in an outward or twisting manner. So even though I'm applying the same amount of pressure with the wheel, there's enough torque out there and there's enough slop in the caliper that the reading is off. So that brings us to, you know, the, the pretty much the third most important thing is to always measure as close as possible to the ruler body while still engaging um, the closest point on the jaws there. Um, so if you were measuring like, uh, something round, you would want to make sure that, you know, the widest point is as close as possible to the ruler body without, you know, going past the, the meeting point on the jaws there. So as long as you're measuring as close as possible to the ruler body and you're always applying the same amount of force here, that's pretty much the fourth most important thing, is the consistency and the point of force. That's why these wheels are there. They're not there just for micro movement. They're there because that's where you should be doing all of your movement. Whether it's something that's three inches big or something that's two inches big, always move the caliper with the wheel. Um, on the cheaper calipers, it keeps you from moving too fast and throwing off the zero point. And it also gives you uh, a controlled fulcrum point. So when you're taking your measurement, you want to apply the same amount of force when you're measuring as you are when you're finding zero. So that force there is the same amount of force you're, you're going you're gonna to apply there. Same amount of force. The consistency of your force is vital. And they put that there so that you have a, a, a common point of leverage and that you're not going to get uh, variance due to, you know, sometimes moving the body. You know, you got this common fulcrum point with a consistent pressure for taking your measurements. So as long as you got a consistent point of force 
and a cons consistent pressure, you're good. And that's going to bring us to the last um, point, and that, that's pretty much user error. Um, say you've got something that is three inches wide. This here is a, what they call a one, two, three block. Um, these are really good for checking the accuracy of your your digital caliper. You get a, a pair of them for fifteen dollars shipped, and you know that the pairs are guaranteed to be like within point zero 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 two of each other, and um, the the measurements are guaranteed to be guaranteed to be just as accurate. So what you've got here is a face that is one inch a face that is three inches and a face that's two inches. So that's why I call it, you know, one, two, three. Um, they're good for checking accuracy. So when you're, when you're measuring something large like this, um, there's a greater chance that you are going to make an error. Um, so you want to make sure that you're always measuring in a parallel plane and that the jaws are fully flat and engaged with the object being measured. So in this case, I'm flush with the top, and I'm taking my measurement there. And that That's important. You don't want to use the thumb wheel to torque it down and get it flat. You want to do all those kind of adjustments with with the your hand on either here and the body. If you're using the thumb wheel to torque it and get that measurement, you're, you're pretty much putting un unneeded strain on the tool and the wheel, and uh, you might eventually screw up your your thing and you're you don't want to put more torque on here than you normally do that's your your control point always apply the same amount of force every single time so if it needs to be adjusted up or down do that with your fingers here or your fingers here so we're going to come down so the thumbs just there applying the same amount of force it always does so if I come down here to the bottom or the middle. We're getting a good three right there. So my thumbs are always applying the same, same amount of force. I just use use the body of the caliper to make adjustments. That, that's a bigger issue when you're doing things that are not flat, something that's rounded or irregularly shaped. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're uh, kinda get the hang of using using your caliper and that you're using it right. If you're using it right, you can get uh, a pretty good measurement with a cheaper digital caliper. Um, this here is about as cheap as you can get. It's made of plastic. You can get them at uh, uh, auto parts stores, O'Reilly's, Napa, whatever. Um, you can get a decent measurement with it. But the margin of error is more because because it's made of plastic, there's more opportunity for deflection, especially as you get out here. It's not going to hold up as well as something that's you know made of stainless steel. So um, plastic ones, you can get a decent measurement, uh, but you're more likely to have slop and error. So that's it for use. Um, Go ahead and check out the full video review to see which one of these babies I recommend. Um, and uh, check out my channel on YouTube, Gadget Class.